Hi everyone, this is Les with uh, Team PyTorch, and today we're going to go over utilizing the backwards prefetch. Um, so I've got some code to show you how to do it. It's actually quite simple, uh, but also we'll try to explain uh, a little bit more of what's actually happening when you're adjusting the prefetch timing. So first things first, let's just make sure you've got a recent release. I'm running with the June, uh, sorry, the July um, 6 nightlies, but uh, 1.12 or higher should work for the backwards prefetch. Next thing uh, we want to do is actually bring in the prefetch class. As you can see here, I've got my imports for FSDP, so standard FSDP class itself. But we're also going to bring in this backwards prefetch here. Um, so once that's imported, that will give you access to any Noom. Um, there's really three different modes that prefetching can take in FSDP. And to clarify, this is happening during the backwards pass specifically. Um, so you can imagine we're working on one current unit layer or FSDP unit. And the question is, when should we start requesting the parameters for the next upcoming FSTP unit? So that's really the timing that we're controlling. Um, so you have three options. The first one, of course, is none, which is where you don't pass in anything related to the backwards prefetching. Uh, and that will be the uh, most postponed, if you will, um, call to request the next parameters. So basically, the current unit would be processed, gradients uh, created, parameters dropped, uh, and then we go ahead and do the um, uh, reduce scatter uh, for the gradients, propagate that, and then request the next unit's uh, parameters to begin the next uh, unit. So <clears throat> that's the current default. Uh, now, in exchange for slightly a little bit more memory, you have two options. Uh, you can do backwards post. So that would be after we finish the current unit and we've dropped those params. But before we do the gradient um, reduce scatter, we'll go ahead and start uh, request to get the parameters for the next uh, unit. And then the earliest one would be backwards pre. And so that would say as soon as you get the uh, parameters for the current unit and you're ready to start processing that, go ahead and immediately request the ones for the next layer. Um, so basically that is the most overlap of computation and communication. <laughs> the one drawback, but it is very minor, um, is that it will add a little bit more peak memory because you can imagine you're storing your current layers um, uh, parameters that has certain memory allocation and then you're as the new one starts streaming in you're going to have that on top so it's going to add a little bit extra uh, but in general uh, it, it's quite effective at it's a very good trade-off basically um, so specifically how to do that is you go ahead and set a prefetch policy here um, and then you've got the three different options as I mentioned backwards prefetch dot backward pre which is arguably the recommended one uh, backwards prefetch backward post and of course none so once you initialize FSTP, it's just passed in as parameter argument here, the backwards prefetch, it'd be backward prefetch policy here. Um, of course, you could also just pass in the unum or class directly uh, up to you, but uh, by having a policy, it's a little more uh, extended or extensible. <coughs> um, excuse me. So in the basic testing uh, that I've done, uh, backwards pre has proven itself to be uh, very beneficial. Uh, you can get speed improvements in your training up to 13%, at least that I've seen, and with very nominal peak memory increases, something on the order of like 0.6%. So uh, generally a good trade-off for the speed relative to the slight memory increase, since again, that's backwards pre. Uh, so that's the first portion, and now you know how to do that. It's quite straightforward. Um, I will go ahead and attempt with some animation here to explain a little more of what's happening uh, to again, cement that intuitive understanding for you. So if we imagine here, <clears throat> excuse me, we would just pretend we have two GPUs, they're FSTP uh, initialized. And so what's happening is we have GPU zero owning the blue uh, parameters, and of course the GPU one owning the green. So first thing during the backward pass, we have our activations from the forward pass. We need to exchange parameters here, and that's the all gather uh, that I mentioned, so that communication. So this is uh, an in motion process, so they're exchanging their parameters here and no computation uh, is happening yet, it's just an exchange of the parameters. Once these start arriving, of course we can begin processing. And so at this point, this is actually where you would do the backwards pre. So what you see is you have all of your um, shards have exchanged their parameters. They're fully loaded, so to speak, for the current unit and they're ready to start processing. So if you do pre, at this point before this even kicks off here, uh, we would go ahead and start requesting the next layer's parameters, and so they would be exchanging over here while this computation is happening. So that's, again, the most accelerated option uh, in terms of uh, overlapping communication and computation. Um, <coughs> post would be, these triangles represent the gradient, so we've gone through uh, each, each uh, unit has been computed, the gradients have been computed, and at this point, <coughs> now it actually doesn't show this completely accurately, 
we would actually drop the non-local parameters for each of these. So they would actually return, oops, to this state, but with the gradients. And once they've done that, here, posts would go ahead and request the next um, uh, parameters. So while the um, reduce scatter is uh, happening, or before the reduce scatter, rather, it can go ahead and start receiving those. Um, and the current default at the moment is none, uh, which would mean that the, you've, you've proceeded with the um, reduce scatter. So the gradients have been um, aggregated here. That's what this is showing. The parameters have been dropped. And then it would start processing this animation or picture here is slightly off. This should be um, not having the, the shared parameters. But then that is that once this is done, then you go ahead and start loading up these. And so it's a much more serialized process. So that is the core differences. And again, I would encourage you to experiment uh, with this. Um, in most cases, pre is the best and most important option. It could be possible that post may be a little bit better for your particular model. So it's worth trying out both. Uh, but in general, using pre uh, does provide a very nice trade-off in terms of uh, better computation overlap. So nice performance gains and a very nominal uh, increased big memory. So hope that helps.